Hi everyone, it's James Arter here. If you're a Logic user, I've got something for you. I've got five tips that make Logic a better place. Let's check them out. Okay, so the first tip is to enable MIDI chase. If you don't have that on, it can be something that could be really, really frustrating. So I'm gonna show you why. Here's an example here where I've recorded a string part, just a very simple thing, and I started playing the notes before the start of the bar. That's not the end of the world. That was how I intended it to be um, happening. Now, the problem is, if I start to play at the start of the bar, it's going to be after the note on message, and therefore, you're not going to hear it. I'll show you. There we go. So you don't hear it until the next note on message, which is really frustrating. So we can change that. If we go to File, Project Settings, MIDI, and then to Chase, and then you've got a couple of things here to enable. You need to enable Notes at the top, and ideally Notes down here as well under Chase on Cycle Jump. Now, when you play it back, you can play after the Notes on Message, and it will play back. I'll show you. So useful. Now, there's one problem with that it's not a global setting. It's a global setting for the project, but not for your system. So it does mean that every time you start a new project, you'll have to do this and go back to the same place in project settings. That's a little bit frustrating, and I think Apple should look into that. But anyway, that was a side note. Let's look at the next one. Next up is capture recording. Now this one comes in two parts. It can be in MIDI and it can be in audio. I'll start with the MIDI version. So say you're recording or maybe your client is recording and uh, you're playing a MIDI instrument and you're just jamming along. You weren't actually set to be recording. You were just having a little play. And then you realize actually that was a fantastic take. I wish I'd captured that. Well, you can. I'm gonna show you. So I'm just gonna hit play, not record at the moment and just have a little bit of a noodle. Beautiful. Now you can hit stop. And before you do anything else, this is really, really important. Now you hit Shift and R, and there you go. That is the part that I just played, now captured. Not sure we really needed to hear that again, but at least it was there in case it was very important. Um, the other way to do that is you can hit Capture Record, which should be on your toolbar just next to your Record button here. If it's not, right click, go to Customize Control Bar, and there you go you can turn it on and off. I like to leave it on there just so I can visually see it, but it's entirely up to you. So this time it's capture recording, but in audio. So I've got a guitar plugged in at the moment. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a noodle and we're gonna see what we can do now. So like I said before, we start in from just hitting play. So you might've been just jamming along to anything, but this time, instead of hitting stop before you finish recording, don't hit stop, you hit record. I'll show you. Don't hit stop, now you hit record. Now as you can see, it looks like you've got nothing recorded there, but drag back the audio waveform, here you go, and there it is. Really handy, again, if you're just jamming along to the track and you were playing along but you didn't hit record, don't worry, don't hit stop, hit record before you hit stop, and there it is. Tip three is allow quick punch. Now, this one is designed for if you're working with somebody else, so if you're like a producer and, and a musician. Um, firstly, what you need to do is go up to record and select allow quick punch. This basically just means that Logic is always ready to record from the state of play um, and it won't break the audio when you hit record. So in this situation, I've got a guitar part already recorded and what I need to do is I wanna listen to what's happening but then I want to re-record and just, just punch into little parts and, and not let it break the audio. That's the main thing. Now I can only do this uh, so well with, with two hands. So you're gonna have to bear with me but I'll show you. So, so you hit play and you'll be able to jam along. You'll be able to hear what's going on. And then as soon as you hit record, it will go into recording mode. And then when you finish recording, you hit record again and it comes out. I'll show you. So you know 
notice there, there was a little bit of a gap that because I had to actually press the button myself. But if you had somebody else doing it for you, then they could do it seamlessly and there'd be no break at all and it'd just be like they're jamming along. Now, remember before I was saying to not put auto input monitoring on, I'll show you why. Because if you have it on, it means that when you're, when you're trying to jam along with the song, you're not gonna hear yourself playing, which might be fine, if you, especially if you have something else doing the, the, the monitoring for you. But if you're monitoring through Logic, you wanna be able to hear yourself. So now I'm gonna play, I'm gonna hit play, and I'm not gonna be able to hear myself playing until I hit record. <laughs> There you go. So you, I couldn't hear anything until I hit record, which is no good at all, especially if you're trying to get some good takes. So let's take that back off. Next up is to enable marquee and fade tool click zones. Now this one is somewhat subjective, but I find it really useful and makes things a lot faster. So you'll notice here that we've got a little bit of audio that I've recorded and I want to edit it. Okay, of course you can do whatever you like. As it stands with the default, all you can do is adjust the length like that, which is fine. But what about if you wanna apply some fades and maybe chop it up? Um, well, of course you can just, you can, you can change the tool. Like I've got a marquee selected over here for my right click. So if I do my option click, then it will appear. That's very, very useful. I can also change that so it's going to fade tool. So then we can use, anytime we press that, it's going to fade. But that to me seems like it's a very long way of doing things. So if you go over to preferences, general to editing, and then you enable these next two things here. So fade tool click zones and marquee tool click zones. Let's enable those. Now, depending on where you're clicking on a waveform, you can see the cursor will change. So we've always got this, which will change the length. But now, anywhere up until like the bottom half mainly, you've got a marquee. So I can do this. I can make little, I can look, make little movements like that. You know, it's really easy to chop things around. And if I go to the top, automatically the fade tool appears and I can do my fades just like that. And there we go, it's gonna be much neater. And I didn't have to press anything else. It was just ready to go, much faster. The last one is setting IO labels. Now this can be especially useful if you have uh, an interface with lots of different channels, lots of different in ins and outs, especially if it has digital in and out. As it stands with my one, I've got an Apollo twin and it has some virtual inputs and it also has some SPDIF inputs. Now, if I look at my audio inputs over here as it stands on Logic, it just says input one to 16. That could kind of mean anything because I'm not too sure how it's all been set up. If I go and change that, if we go to mix and then IO labels, and you'll get this dialogue that will appear. Now, if we choose the top, let's go to the, the top 16, highlight them all, and we, put, we choose provided by driver, it's gonna tell us which ones are, are already selected by default so we can see what they are. So we go over here and now we can see that input that's all correct. Input nine is speed if left. Very, very useful. Now you can take that one step further if you like, especially if you have a setup which is which always remains the same. So you're not using a patch bay, but your you, your second input is always your vocal mic, for example. So you can call it whatever you like. So in that case, second vote second input, we're gonna say user, and then we can call it vocal mic. You can put a short name in there too. We'll call Vox. Now when you have a look over here on input two, it says vocal mic. So you all you always know what that is and it's really handy, especially when you're using the same system and you just wanna be able to fly around it as quick as possible. Okay, so those are my five tips that make Logic a better place, but it's by no means a definitive list. So why not leave a comment and give me an idea of what I can throw into the next video so we can share the wealth with everyone. If you like what you saw, hit a like. Also hit subscribe, it'll be somewhere down here and press the little notification bell and you'll get notified of all the upcoming videos. Thanks for listening, see you next time.